announcements and questions. I, 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 among others, just picked two. One is on the role of tax advisors, of the middlemen, uh, because that was, in a, in a provocative way, where a question that was asked, well, why would you want to target the advisors if it's, in the end, they are here only to, you know, uh, observe the law and apply the law, you know? And the second, I mean, that's what I picked up. Huh? Uh, second question on link with financial regulation. Uh, in the end, is it, uh, that's how I perceive it, uh, uh, and which both Sol and, uh, uh, and Christian picked up is, in the end, perhaps a part of the solution is also in a, in a broader discussion on, on financial regulation, financial transparency, yeah. and so on. Uh, but let's, uh, let's start with you, Christian. Okay, very quickly. Uh, as Saul said, uh, we had rules. Uh, we had football rules. And uh, the intermediaries came and said, okay, let's take the ball with the hands. And they, they changed the rules. They're not only applying the rules of the, uh, uh, the uh, UK parliamentary, uh, what, what, what's it called? Budget and Means Committee? No, it, it's in the US. Uh, ma ma uh, right, um, Margaret Hodges, when, when, when she interviewed all these people coming from Big Four, uh, um, they, uh, they showed that they are not writing the rule, they're interpreting the rules, right? And uh, the interpretation of the rule is, is essential in, in, in general and in tax affairs. So uh, if we could control more the way they interpret rules, and uh, one of the guys said, we, we are sure of our interpretation on 25% of the cases, <laughs> meaning they are not sure what they're advising and 75% of the, of the cases. So uh, uh, it's not only are they applying the rules. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in some countries, they are making the rules. And when they're not making the rules, they're building up all the interpretation uh, around the rules. So I think it's very important. And it's maybe it's quite a good idea to, to try to ask to separate the audit from the council and maybe a way not to, uh, uh, to make all these uh, uh, companies disappear. Uh, otherwise, it will, their, their power will be more and more concentrated in a few actors. But to, to, to break them in, in different uh, activities may be one of the solutions. I'll have a look about the, the Amir uh, uh, law uh, directive. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the effect, uh, uh, it means that the effect would be very quick. You know, you, you've got uh, legislation, I've got, you've got figures uh, falling down just as soon as the Amir uh, directive is voted. But I, I'll have a look. It's, it, it's, a, it's a good point. And uh, on country by country reporting, uh, clearly last Wednesday, Pierre Moscovici went backwards, clearly. Uh, um, we had uh, this report uh, uh, last year from Price Waterhouse. The Commission asked Price Waterhouse the question, should we go for country by country reporting? Should we make public uh, country, by country, uh, by country by country reporting, and Price Waterhouse said, yes, the European Commission should go and should make it public. There will be no negative uh, influence impact on the European economy. So we had a report already. Why Pierre Moscovici uh, uh, t told us last Wednesday that he will try to ask another commission to see blah, blah, blah. The, the European Commission asked last year, and the, the answer was positive. So it's pulling back. When he was French Minister of Finance, uh, he pulled back from the uh, banking reform. Now the European Commissioner is pulling back from country by country reporting. Unfortunately, our Commissioner is someone who is very keen to listen to the business uh, 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 ideas. Uh, apply the rules. Absolutely right, they interpret, but it's a circular process. Not only do they interpret, they also contribute to writing the rules. The uh, rulemaking is a circular process. Rules are uh, uh, expressed in general abstract ways and then have to be interpreted. Uh, but what you find is, especially in areas like tax, uh, that the, uh, the big four uh, contribute to writing. That's what they're doing in this room down the hall here. They are proposing a rewrite of the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Now, the transfer pricing guidelines, in principle, are not a hard law. They're what you call soft law. However, uh, they are applied in practice by tax administrations and the big four themselves. So what they're discussing is a discussion draft of a rewrite of the transfer pricing guidelines, which once agreed by the Committee on Fiscal Affairs, that will be there. And in many countries' laws, in the UK, there is legislation that says that UK tax treaties should be interpreted in accordance with the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. And not only the UK, you have the same in Tanzania. In the Tanzanian uh, uh, 2010 
legislation on arm's length. It says uh, tax treaties shall be interpreted in line with the OECD transfer pricing guidelines and the UN manual on transfer pricing. But it's there. Who put it there? Probably a World Bank advisor who helped Tanzania draft their transfer pricing legislation. So they are writing. When they, re when they agree the rewrite of, of the transfer pricing guidelines, that will be the law around the world, in the whole world. Um, so if they, re if they rewrite it in a complex way, um, then they can offer their services to companies and to governments. I mean, the Mexican people I went and had lunch with are saying, you know, that they want to apply some rewrite which they've managed to persuade with China on uh, location-specific advantages. Uh, so, I mean, that's one way to try and redress, but it, it makes the rules even more complicated. And now there's a, a, a consultancy firm, NERA, who's published articles about how you adjust uh, comparables in order to take account of location-specific advantages. Uh, so they're on both sides. Uh, and by complicating the rules, uh, they can then provide technical services uh, that make the whole process seem objective and scientific and so on. Uh, right. That's the, the process. And we have to follow every step of that. Uh, we have to be involved at every stage. Then I just want to pick up this point, uh, particularly in terms of what's being formulated, uh, of the CCCTB. I do think that is going to become quite an important issue. And we should try and anticipate it now by, by having a closer look. I think some of the points that we've made about the draft CCCTB that then went to the council uh, were good ones about that. But I think also um, <coughs> there will be some rethink, because they put it forward as an internal market measure. Uh, not as a tax measure because of competencies. But now increasingly the Commission is putting it forward in the BEPS kind of context as an uh, a anti-tax avoidance measure. And that should open up the qu whole question of the relationship between any CCCTB that might apply between either the EU, but it probably won't be accepted, but through uh, a limited number of participating states, and the outside world, because the way they formulated it was it would only apply internally, and you could still use tax havens on all the rest externally, and what would apply externally would be all the rules that they're writing down there. Uh, but there's no reason why they shouldn't draft, and I think we should anticipate that by putting forward a modified CCCTB that would incorporate, for example, profit split rules and other uh, more logical uh, systems to the outside world. I mean, it's unlikely that would get through, but at least it would show a way forward. Uh, that's, I think, the way a CCCTB should work as, as being a, an anti-avoidance uh, um, uh, uh, measure. Just <coughs> very quick on, on treaty shopping and Panama. It's quite funny because Spain had to renegotiate the double con ta the, ta the tax treaty with Panama also as a precondition. Uh, before the Spanish companies were um, finally appointed uh, to be one of the biggest uh, uh, contracts they have ever had. Um, and the result is uh, not in the interest of, uh, of uh, those countries. Span Spain is also one of the most aggressive countries when negotiating uh, double tax treaties with Latin America. Uh, the only country where we found that they managed to balance is Argentina. Uh, because the Argenti well, the capacity, the negotiating ca capacity of Argentina is not the same as other countries, and uh, the Argentinian tax administration found that in 2011 uh, there was a strange move from uh, headquarters of Argentinian companies moving to Spain uh, through uh, figure is uh, some kind of uh, holding companies, so they were not paying taxes in Argentina and not paying taxes in uh, in Spain. The investment from Argentina to Spain rise, rose by 1,400% in one year. Uh, the, the only example when we found a country that was renegotiating the, the double tax uh, treaty. And, um, but the others, they are not, I mean, that's why it has to be on a multilateral space because not all the countries have this capacity. The other thing is, uh, uh, when you were talking about the cuts in, um, in human resources in tax administration, we need also to look at where those human resources are allocated. In Sp Spain is also one of the countries where we have the smaller ratio of uh, tax inspectors per uh, inhabitant, but the resources are not on the big tax avoidance. They are most on the small uh, tax avoidance control. Mm -hmm. So this, in, I mean, we, we, we also have to show, uh, to highlight this, and I encourage you to do <laughs> this kind of analysis. I'm sure you will find lots of uh, support. And just to show that uh, country by country reporting is not 
as um, useful. We calculated also that um, only 183 Spanish companies, less than 1% of the large big uh, companies in Spain, will have to implement the country-by-country -country reporting. Uh, so less than 1% is difficult to consider that it is going to change the, change the terms of the debate towards uh, more transparency. Eh bien, uh, thanks to all. We have, um, Brendan, are you, you still with us? <laughs> Brendan is gone, but for sure the FLCIO uh, will be back with us very soon, I'm, uh, I hope. Okay, let's have a short, uh, uh, super short 10 minutes break, Max, okay, if we can. And so let's resume at, uh, at 4.30, if that's a plan, okay? Okay. Uh,